The reason, again, stories are so important in your YouTube videos is because us humans love them. And what does the algorithm want? It wants people sticking around watching them. So when you kind of get invested into a story, you kind of want to see the outcome. You, you know, you, you're sticking around in that video. And someone goes, hey, I'm going to click on that thing because I had a cliffhanger on that last video on what's going on with this guy and his company or his life, his family's life. And so stories are huge. So how can we always continue to incorporate more story, more story, more story, your story, you know, in the content, even the educational content, where's the story, you know, like where's the relevance of, of this? Hey there, welcome back to the Video Creator Show where we talk about YouTube and after listening to today's episode, you might consider starting a vlog channel. You'll at least understand what a vlog is and how to make a really good one and how they can help your channel grow. I wanted to address this because it seems like daily vlog channels are some sort of mystery or some sort of thing of the past and no one's really talking about them, but really that's not true. You see, so many vloggers are using vlogs as part of their strategy to grow on YouTube and to get more revenue for their business and, and so that's what we're going to be discussing today let's go ahead and dive right into today's episode get ready all right i'm really excited to talk about vlogs i've created a couple vlogs in my days and grant have you ever created a vlog i have not the closest i've come to making a vlog was like instead of writing a script i would make an outline of what i wanted to talk about and then i would speak directly to the camera and that would sort of make the video and I would kind of open up about some personal things, but it wasn't a proper vlog by any stretch of the imagination. I was not holding a camera and walking around and showing people my day. It was, you know, it, it had some of the intimacy of a vlog, but it was not a vlog. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But so what exactly, how would you define a vlog then? You're saying you're holding a camera, all that kind of stuff. How would you define it? Well, I guess technically the definition of a vlog, right, is video blog, right? Mm -hmm. if, we're, if we're going real deep there. So you're essentially using video as a medium for making a blog post, which I guess <laughs> technically could be about anything. So I, I sort of see it as a stream of consciousness. <laughs> and a vlog to me has to involve bringing the audience along with something you are doing that day. It doesn't necessarily have to be taking them through your whole day or your whole week. It could be, you know, hey, I went to this cool car show and I'm going to vlog it. It could be, it, it's, you're bringing the audience along into an aspect of your life. That's how I would define a vlog. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And it really, they started as kind of like it's day in the life, right? Like if you create a day in the life video, then most likely that's a vlog. And some people are vloggers, meaning that's really all the content they make. So every day or, you know, maybe twice a week, three times, it could be any cadence. It could be once a week. You are doing something that day and you're documenting it and that's a vlog. So, I mean, Gary Vaynerchuk is a, is a vlogger who uh, does day in the life stuff often and he's a businessman and it all kind of relates back to him growing his business. So there are ways to grow your business through vlogs and his kind of strategy was always document it. You know, if you didn't, if you don't want to like do a talking head and teach somebody how to do a Photoshop project on the computer, or you don't want to teach somebody how to do their taxes or whatever niche you're in, you could just document your daily life being an accountant for people and be a vlogger, yet you can kind of niche down that way. But that's not really the beginning of vlogs because Gary Vaynerchuk might have started doing that in like 2017. Who are some of the old school vloggers that come to mind for you? I mean, I, Justine, is probably one of the oldest. Uh, I was looking at her channel beforehand when I was kind of looking over your script and the, her oldest video was from like 17 years ago, which is just absurd. And yeah, probably I, Justine, is the oldest vlogger I can think of. And then kind of the the classical golden YouTube era. I mean, she was definitely there for that as well. She's still around, but also, yeah, Casey Neistat, Emma Chamberlain, uh, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, the those kind of big names are usually what I think of when I think of vlogging. Yep, I agree too. And, and I, Justine, like you said, 17 years ago, and I just checked her channel too a few minutes ago, and she hasn't uploaded three hours ago. 
So she's still in it. I mean, 2.4 thousand videos over 17 years is what she's been doing. And she's, you know, made an incredible career. So people that say that like, you can't, you know, monetize a vlog or you can't make a living off vlogging or you can't create a business off vlogging. I think we're already starting to kind of debunk that myth a little bit already when thinking about Gary Vaynerchuk, I Justine, I mean, Casey Neistat. I think that it is just maybe insane that, that like that's celebrity status. You know, as far as YouTube goes, that, that's some major, major YouTubers there. But, um, you know, I just seen does all kinds of content, you know, reviews, vlogs, sketches, you know, all kinds. She's done everything. But uh, I think what you named there was really was the evolution of vlogging as far as the people. It started with maybe I Justine and Shay Carl. I think that was back in that Philip DeFranco maybe, and then moved into the Logan Paul. So for those that don't know, Logan Paul, Jake Paul, I, I would say like Roman Atwood is a name around that same time. A lot of people came onto YouTube and started doing daily vlogs, which means they're releasing a vlog every day from Vine. When Vine shut down, right? All these creators on Vine, Logan Paul, Jake Paul were the main ones there. There's other names too, came over and started these vlog channels. And to me, these vlogs were different than the Casey Neistat and I Justine because Casey Neistat really was day in the life, but he would incorporate st really great story into it. And then Logan Paul came onto the scene and it was day in the life, but it was more like scripted day in the life, right? It's kind of like the reality show that's scripted where he was doing all kinds of bizarre things. So to me, that's the second era of the vlog where people started to kind of script their vlogs. Would you agree with that? I would say so. Or they would kind of go in with like a script in their head, yeah. if not like an actual script. Yeah, it was impromptu, right? I would say I would agree with that. But there, it's like they knew that some part in that day they were going to go to a dog grooming place and shave their dog bald. And it was going to be really funny in part of the video. And it wasn't technically like a real day in the life. Like Casey Neistat lived in New York City, you know, was working on kind of like these tech companies on, on the side. He was doing all kinds of like little side jobs and side things and just living his life. Really, he had his wife in some videos and stuff. And he had an office that he would use. And he was just using creativity to create vlogs. So what, what would be the difference you would say between a Casey Neistat and a Logan Paul vlog? Well, I'd say Casey Neistat, I mean, when he got famous, he was in kind of his early mid thirties, whereas Logan Paul, Jake Paul, they were in like their early twenties, late teens. And so to me, it was Casey Neistat was like day in the life of a really successful video producer of a really successful freelance videographer. Mm -hmm. Uh, whereas Jake Paul and Logan Paul, to me, were more bombastic, like, let's go out and do something crazy and film it. Really, like, kind of manic energy. You never really knew what you were going to get. Whereas Casey Neistat, I wouldn't say he was, like, you necessarily knew what you were going to get. But it did feel more like, I went through and watched a bunch of Casey Neistat videos pretty recently. And every single one kind of followed a certain cadence. And it, it was very much like, this is what I'm doing and I happen to be filming it. Whereas Jake Paul and Logan Paul was more, I'm going to go out and do something for a video and I'm going to make it as crazy as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that to me is the quintessential difference between the two. Yeah, totally. And I think there's a lot more videography work and creativity in the Casey Neistat stuff for sure, as far as videography goes, but as far as maybe creativity of topics and just funny stuff happening in the video, maybe you can give that to, you know, the Logan Paul Roman Atwood era but there's a lot more to vlogging than than just that era i mean there's family vlogs right that's a huge thing where people are just doing kind of day in the life with their family and they're going through and doing activities with their family playing with toys all that kind of stuff going on roller coasters those are it's a very popular niche as well as travel vlogs right you see travel vlogs are more for like the cinematic videography work and just being able to see different parts of the world through youtube for free and kind of almost experience them in a way so there are a ton of different types of vlog channels but what would you say is the best type of vlog like to monetize like i want to start talking about the business side a little bit right now of vlogging and you know even logan paul should credit you know, even the success that he has with Prime and all the other business things that he has going on, some not so, I guess, ethical or great, right? The the crypto stuff that he that he did. But uh, 
you know, Prime is a, is a big business success and he should give a lot of that credit to those early vlogging days because that's really where he got his name and grew and eventually he has a podcast and all that stuff. But um, yeah, I want to talk about like monetizing. How have you seen people monetize or make a career off vlogging besides just AdSense? So, I mean, I think the biggest thing is just if you can make entertaining, interesting videos and create this kind of intimate connection with your audience, then you can end up building a business behind that. Yeah. So you can start selling merchandise or have a Patreon because your audience feels like they know you and they want to support you. So yeah, really just the biggest thing is that sort of gold standard of are your videos bringing something new to the table? Are you showcasing your unique personality? And it, is the audience retention good? really. And if you can do that and upload consistently, you know, whether that's like once a week or twice a week or every day, even if you're, if you're crazy, <laughs> then you can really start selling things or selling information or even just having people donate to your Patreon. So that that's probably the biggest way. And I guess there's kind of tech vloggers out there. I know I just does a lot of tech videos kind of going to see a new Tesla or something. I, I think if you're able to cover trending things like that kind of new shiny stuff then you can use affiliate links to like hey if you do want to buy a tesla click this link if you do want to buy this phone that i'm reviewing click this link you know you can hop on trends but i i do think ultimately you just want to establish that connection with your audience and feel like you're bringing something unique to the table that they can connect with. Yeah, merchandise, like you said, um, all that stuff. I think that when it comes to having a business related to your vlog, I think value-based talking head content has the edge there, right? If you're, if you're coming on YouTube and you're teaching people how to be an accountant, keep using that example, but if you're doing that, you have the edge on the business side, right? You can have courses that you release, you can sell your service, accounting services, all that kind of stuff. So you have the edge there. But on the content side, I would say that vlogging has the edge, meaning, you know, what does the algorithm want? It wants good watch time. It wants people to, to binge watch and, you know, creating value based talking head videos is a great strategy for most business owners, but it's not, it's not the easiest way to grow on YouTube, right? You could with vlogs, you could create some really cool content that does get people binge watching, loving their, you know, you're telling stories, right? Storytelling, you can get people to stick around longer for that watch time. And, and so I would give the edge to getting views to vlog channels, right? Vlog channels could get more views than accounting channels or, you know, info-based channels, education channels, I guess, but harder to monetize. So a lot of it to me is personal brand, right? You got to build a, you're building a personal brand. If you have a, a YouTube channel, that's your name and you're creating a vlog channel and vlogging every, you know, a couple of days a week or whatever, you're really building a great personal brand. You need to figure out, there's gotta be some kind of subject, like, like even for Casey Neistat, like he, like you said, he did videography, but also he did launch some apps, you know, some apps. And that wasn't even really his expertise. I don't think he was a programmer or anything like that, but his, because of his personal brand, you know, all these opportunities just start popping up. And that's kind of the, un, the thing that's not talked about is you can just create, you know, content and, and grow an audience and opportunities will pop up. So there's definitely that, but also I wanted to mention too, like brand deals. If you have a family vlog, you know, it's not that you can't, it's hard to start a business on a family vlog, right? But you could definitely do some great brand deals and have that be a huge part of your strategy and make, you know, multiple six figures a year doing that, depending on how many, how many views you're bringing in. I think that for those people that are listening that are in that education space, right? They are those tax consultants and stuff and they want to create info and they're thinking about how do I do vlog style? back to the Gary Vaynerchuk method. You know, it's just document what you're doing. You're going to get other tax professionals wanting to learn from you, right? They're going to see you as the expert, even though you're documenting your day to day and talking about your struggles and your, your wins. And so I think that's a great strategy too. And one that I would like to do personally, like for vid shops, right? I think documenting, you know, what's going on there. It's called uh, work in public. I think is what, what it's called. Working in public is a great way to build your business with vlogs. So when you say work in public, you mean like you're building something in the open that people can see and follow. Yeah. Like reporting basically on as you're yeah, reporting it. on the successes, the losses, you know, new, new right. things coming up. It's a really 
popular way to build or it's a really con popular content strategy for people who have businesses is to do that is just document basically what's going on in your business because for whatever reason other business owners that's a great way for them to learn right to see actually what's going on in in other businesses so yeah it's a great content strategy that you know we could do a whole episode on actually but moving on okay moving on you know daily vlogging is absolutely hard <laughs> it's hard so uh i guess when it comes to daily vlogging, do you have, is there any tips you could think of or is, do you just, do you recommend it or just let's talk a little bit about daily vlogging. Give me your take on it. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. <laughs> I think if you feel like you have the time and the energy and the charisma for it, then go for it. I mean, why not? But I, I wouldn't say it's necessary to upload every day or anything. I, I do think the people who succeeded in daily vlogging, they didn't start with a daily vlog. Like they made videos that were good at a pace that worked for them until they kind of got the cadence and the rhythm and the style down. And then they were able to make a daily vlog. I also feel like daily vlogging is kind of dead right now. I... I don't really see many, I'm sure they're out there, but it's definitely not what it was a few years ago, which I, I do think it's interesting how vlogging seems to be in a dead period right now, which is kind of interesting because vlogging does feel very intimate or something in, in a way, like you're bringing the audience with you in your life. And why would that be dead? Like, are we tired of it? Are people tired of making it? Are people just not watching it? Like I'm, I'm kind of curious where it went and why. Yeah. And I, I have my take on that. It's, uh, it's especially the daily vlogging stuff to me is dead because of the algorithm really, really wanting quality over quantity. I feel like there was a time when the algorithm could maybe have favored quantity, right? Number of videos. And I think that was helping channels if they, if they released every day. I mean, I remember a channel meet Kevin it wasn't a vlog channel, just a talking head channel about stocks and real estate and stuff, but he would release like every day and even two times a day. And this was, I don't know what year, but probably five to 10 years ago. And boy, did he grow quick. And I really was just following along. And I was like, wow, this is really the strategy right now is to release often. But I don't think that's the strategy these days, you know? So I think that's why daily vlogging is gone. And I think just vlogging in general, I don't know. I still think it's a better content style for me to watch. It's, inter it's more entertaining for me to watch than talking head videos. But with that said, I think there's ways that you can do both. Although you're not holding a camera, walking around vlogging, which I guess is typical vlogging. If you sit down from a camera and I want, we're going to start talking about how to create good vlogs here in a second. This is just one style where you sit down in front of a camera like this and talking head and you just tell a story. And then I guess the vlogging part of it is going and either you've already captured the B-roll, right? So imagine you're out and about and you're shooting a lot of stuff as you're doing something throughout your day. You come home later, you tell the story of the day much easier and talking head style. And then you use all the daily clips as B-roll. I think and this is a little bit of a tangent, I guess, but I, I, I do like the style, but it's just not easy to do as well. So I think that's another reason for the death is you need to figure out an easy style. And I think I just gave you a pretty good one now, but um, to you, like what is a what does it take to create a good vlog? We're talking about cameras, talking about mics, talking about just videography skills. Like what does it take? I think the most important thing is a good camera presence and a certain amount of charisma mm -hmm. and your ability to make the audience feel interested and comfortable simply by talking mm -hmm. or showing them what you're doing. Like you need to be excited about what you're doing and that needs to come through in a really visceral way. And like beyond that, I don't think the equipment is that important. And I was actually just listening to Emma Chamberlain's podcast yesterday and she said she doesn't care about the equipment. Like she'll film things on her phone and, you know, her videos come across like that. They're edited incredibly well, but she's not putting in a bunch of effort to make things look really crisp or make the sound quality absolutely perfect. Uh, I, I think those sorts of things end up taking away your energy to focus on the thing that matters, which is the storytelling in your presence within the video. Like everything else I think is secondary, especially in that genre. Like if you can be comfortable and know how to tell people a story about what you're doing and kind of show, show don't tell, then I think 
you'll be successful and you'll make really good videos in that genre. So yeah, I, I really just think camera presence is the most important thing. Okay. Yeah. That's a great tip. I, uh, do know that Casey Neistat used to use, right? DSLR, super nice mic, super, and you, he used the DSLR with a shotgun mic, I think for the most part, and had probably a pretty solid lens, probably carried around a wide angle and kind of a close up. But that was, you know, many years ago. And the camera phone game has gotten better because I think back then it was kind of necessary to use some sort of camera. I mean, I remember using the Canon G7 X Mark II, I think is like the most famous vlogging camera. I remember buying that. It was a long time ago now. And because it was, it did shoot better than my phone. But I think now you're right. I think the phone, the colors and everything is just so not good in a phone and you know audio is important to me so i mean if, if you're gonna if you're gonna make a video you better have some good audio so my advice as far as equipment goes would be yeah camera phone works figure out some audio whether it's a uh, lavalier mic or just being close to the iphone is good enough actually but if you have the iphone pretty far away and you're trying to talk to it you're gonna have some shaky audio so it's just knowing kind of the fundamentals of all that but yeah as far as equipment goes I wouldn't worry too much about it. I think videography skills matter a lot. I think that you need to be able to capture B-roll. I think you need to have um, cool clips that create transitions from one area to another, because a lot of times you're vlogging in multiple environments in one video. And that was like a Casey Neistat trick, right? He always had those cool clips of him just cruising on the skateboard by the thing. And he, you could just imagine him in New York City taking this big expensive camera, setting it somewhere random, hitting record, doing a couple takes on a skateboard or whatever, and then putting it all together at the end. So, um, but I think, yeah, if you're going to vlog, having good videography skills, like whip transitions and all that kind of stuff, like that's where you want to be worrying more about than the actual t uh, camera equipment, but also storytelling, right? If you're going to vlog, you have to really be the master of storytelling because you got to tell a story throughout that. And if you just document what you do and there's no story, it's kind of boring. Have you ever seen any boring vlogs? Yeah, and I think a boring vlog, it fails to follow the the basic story structure, yeah. right? Which is you have a beginning, a middle, and an end. So you have kind of the the setup, the, the body, and the climax, and sort of the resolution mm -hmm. of... And that, that's the arc mm -hmm. of things, yeah. is you start out with what am I doing and why does it matter? And then you do the thing. And then kind of towards the end of you doing the thing, there's kind of a, a payoff somehow, you know, maybe it's you're giving a TED talk or you're giving some sort of speech. And then the vlog is kind of you getting there and meeting people and getting ready and talking about what this speech means to you. And then you, maybe you show like a brief clip of the speech itself. And then, you know, the audience claps and then you're meeting people and kind of the audience gets to see people reacting positively to you, shaking your hand, whatever. Um, and then kind of the aftermath, how did it feel for you? What did it feel like? Like, was it as good as you wanted it to be? Blah, blah, blah. And that's kind of the, the arc of things is you walk the audience through, like, what am I doing and why does it matter? And then once you actually do the thing and there's a payoff and then you can kind of unwind at the end of it and mm -hmm. conclude everything. And that that's like a basic arc. And I think a boring version of that would be, I'm going to go do something cool today. And you don't really explain why it matters to you. You're like, I'm going to give a speech. And you don't say what the speech is. You don't say who invited you. You're just kind of like talking it up and saying it's going to be really cool. But nobody knows why you're doing it or why they should care. And then maybe you, you know, half the video is just you recording the speech itself and then kind of putting that in there. And, but you're not like telling a story. You're kind of just documenting what happened. And that's boring. Like there needs to be a sort of a bow on it. You need to kind of show this bird's eye view of what happens, not just what happened exactly. I think also you really need to express how you feel about what's happening. And that should really come across. Mm -hmm. And if you can't express how you feel about what's going on, then it's just going to be boring. It's going to be kind of monotonous and people aren't going to understand why they should care if they're not sensing how much you care. Totally. That was a great breakdown of, of how to create good stories. And the reason, again, stories are so important in your YouTube videos is because us humans love them. 
And what does the algorithm want? It wants people sticking around watching them. So when you kind of get invested into a story, you kind of want to see the outcome. You, you know, you, you're sticking around in that video. And, you know, your whole YouTube channel can just be one big story too. You know, one video to the next, just building. I mean, that's the ultimate, right? Is that when you do release a new video and YouTube does put it on the homepage of everybody that's hit subscribe on your channel and a few other people that have watched some of your previous videos maybe, and it shows right there that someone goes, hey, I'm going to click on that thing because I had a cliffhanger on that last video on what's going on with this guy and his company or his life, his family's life. And so stories are huge. So how can we always continue to incorporate more story, more story, more story, your story, you know, in the content, even the educational content, where's the story, you know, like, where's the relevance of, of this? Like, you know, you need to learn this accounting tip because, you know, my first job I ever got, they asked me to do this right on the spot. I couldn't do it. And this is how, you know, if it has a story, it's going to be a lot better. And, and you were talking about the arcs and stuff of like story arcs and stuff. And I remember seeing a, a great video one time it had like three or four different story arcs, but um, the two that stuck out to me the most and viewers and listeners, you guys can just use these. They're, they're really basic ones is basically starting at the bottom, right? You, you got nothing like you, your times are rough. Things are bad. And then getting it, getting it, you know, and achieving it right before and after, like that's an easy story to, you know, to tell. And the other one's kind of the opposites, you know, you got it all whatever, everything's good, you're the best, and then you lose it all. And then you get it back, you know, it's kind of the end. So those kind of like up and down creates drama in your story. And, it, you know, it's kind of funny. It's like those memes you see sometimes where it's like, uh, you'll see a YouTube thumbnail of someone crying. And then the title is like, my dad got shot. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna click on that. <laughs> my dad got shot. And then you watch the video and like, they go and they do like laser tag. <laughs> <laughs> dirty yeah dirty dirty, dirty. It, it's but that's like the extreme right of like them trying to like you know use it tell a story i guess of of their dad getting shot but i mean that's just straight clickbait but it just reminds me of that's funny yeah clickbait can work it can definitely work and if you're funny about it too i don't think people necessarily mind like that's a really funny example honestly it's uh you know, especially if you're kind of known to be a bit of a troll or not take things too seriously, then yeah, I think clickbait can be okay. You just got to be got to be yeah. careful. It's possible to overdo yeah, like, it. Like That's that example sure. is definitely overdoing it. I think somebody would be not happy on that one, but um, like not overdoing it, but still kind of using the th same thing is just like, I don't know, let me think of an example. Like, I don't know, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but like one that actually is true, right? Like the title is is whatever it is. And then it's just a little exaggerated, I guess, you know, but it's, it's still true. And it, it's some of that watched that video would still be like, oh, wow, her dad really did lose his license or his dad, her dad really did get arrested, but it was for, a, you know, not showing up in court for parking tickets, you know, <laughs> or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, anyways. Yeah. Maybe my dog fell in love and broke his heart. Exactly. There you, you know, go. He, he met some female dog and they hung out for a while and then the play date was over and he was sad and, but that that's basically what happened he fell in love and then his heart broke but maybe they'll see each other again there you go that's future content hey, right i might there. have to i might have to steal that one you know i just have to borrow my mom's dog but no one will know so it's all right there you I'll go man the there scam. you go no uh but okay yeah i think i think um what what would be like just as we get closer here like one piece of advice for people that are considering doing their very first vlog like what piece of advice would you have for somebody saying hey i'm pretty good at making these videos i make i've made 100 youtube videos i want to do a vlog what should i do hmm i would say don't be afraid of it being bad yeah. and like because vlogging is weird it's like i think it can be harder to really fix things in post if the kind of core of it isn't there. If your camera presence isn't there, if you are usually used to scripting things really intensely, like it's a totally kind of flowy kind of creative process, I think, as opposed to that sort of scripted style of content. Like it's a skill and you need to build it up. And you're probably not going to be very good at it if you've never done it before. Because uh, even those videos I did that weren't vlogs by any stretch of the imagination, but they had that sort of similar energy of sitting down and talking to a camera without a real script, maybe just an outline. Like you really have to be in the right headspace to do it. And it's not like doing voiceover mm -hmm. where you can take a billion takes of this script and then finally you get a good one and you can kind of edit it all together. You know, I think with vlogging, if you're taking a billion takes, 
it kind of ruins the magic of it and you really have to be in the moment and let it flow it's almost like if you are willing to let your vlogs suck and you're willing to kind of go with the first or second take every time in the grand scheme of things that's going to make your videos way better than trying to get it perfect in the moments every time uh because you're gonna start practicing how to engage with your intuition on commands while you're talking to the camera as opposed to kind of constantly being trapped in this perfectionist cycle of things yeah no that's a great tip because that is the tip to continue doing it if, is you just got to get better at it. it's not easy it's hard and especially talking to a camera in public and stuff that's really hard but you know i think for your creative juices vlogging is great i used to love editing up my vlogs and you can just you can do a lot. You can make them pretty good. And connecting with your audience. Vlogs are great. Give them, give them an inside look of, of who you are and you know your daily life and stuff is great. I think you can definitely build a deeper connection with your audience than just straight educational type content. And the last thing is, is you know, I think it's more entertaining to document your accounting, job, lifestyle, whatever, right? you know, whatever your niche is than just to always be putting out you know, talking head educational content is just more, more entertaining to me. So I recommend people mix it in, just test it out. I mean, when I tested it out, it didn't work great for me because all I was creating was basketball training tutorials. And then all of a sudden I started dropping some vlogs. My audience didn't like it. It didn't, it didn't drive mm. views. They were like, what the hell is yeah, this? Yeah. This isn't exactly. basketball. I mean, they, it was basketball themed, but um, still mm. they're there for the tutorials when they realize they're not going to get a new move you know it was just what i built my audience on you know you can't get a hundred thousand subscribers of doing that and then switch it but i think if you start from the beginning or if you just just whatever you have now just start mixing it in see how it does you know you might be surprised it might do well so that's kind of my take on the whole thing if you guys are listening to this on itunes or uh, apple podcast please hit subscribe uh, maybe on spotify hit subscribe we're trying to grow those numbers also on youtube if you're watching then hit subscribe on youtube of course we're hoping that some of our past videos or maybe future videos will get promoted to you and thank you guys all so much for listening go and start a vlog channel do it do it just do it <laughs>